All right, it looks like we are live. Hey everybody, I am Margie Ramos Davis, creator of the Fast and Easy Way to QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor Certification Courses. And this is our first live stream of the year. This is typically something we do every week, um, but I was traveling earlier this month and then my luggage got lost. And um, guess what was in my luggage? all my makeup. So, so unfortunately we had to push it back. So I am delighted to be back here with you today. Our uh, live streams are streamed live inside of our Facebook group, which is um, the QBO Gym Locker Room. This is where you can get hands-on practice with QuickBooks Online. I have tons of exercises that you can walk through, uh, but you need to be a member of the locker room to get them. The ones that we're going over today, we will post down in the description, but if you would like access to our treasure trove then uh, of exercises, then make sure that you join the locker room. So um, looks like we already have somebody reminding us that uh, because this is through StreamYard, then uh, you do need to allow StreamYard to uh, share your name so that we can see who you are if you're posting via Facebook. All right, so today uh, we are going to be focusing on QBO Advanced. Now, when I say QBO Advanced, I am talking about the subscription level QBO Advanced, which is the highest level that um, is available, not the advanced level uh, certification. This is a really important distinction. When I was first starting out and I was getting my uh, certificate, when I was getting my certifications, I saw a live boot camp from Intuit about QBO Advanced, and I thought, "Oh, this is just what I need. I'm going to get my advanced certification." But I was in it for five minutes and realized, no, they're talking about the QBO Advanced subscription level. So, um, interesting for this year's advanced certification test. Um, they are testing you actually on QBO advanced features, which they have not done in the last several years that I have been um, creating certification courses. So, um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, they pushed some other things out and um, they also revealed a new training portal this year. And the two of those things combined, having the new training portal and having the, um, the new QBO advanced level subscription requirements in the test made things a little bit dif difficult uh, to navigate. So I thought I would just spend the first few minutes of today's live stream talking, to, talking about how you can get to kind of the secret stuff inside your Intuit training. All right, so here I am inside my um, training portal. So you should know how to get there. This is only available if you have a QBO A account. So uh, there's also a link below for everything you ever wanted to know about um, QBO uh, certification, Pro Advisor, and how to get your free QBO A account how to access the free training that's inside of Intuit. And uh, so here we are, so you should know this, you go into Pro Advisor, you select training, and that's how I got here. Um, there are a couple of things inside here. Inside the personalized path, you can um, answer some questions and they will give you the answers for, um, no, they're not gonna give you the answers. They'll give you the lessons that you need to study based on how you responded to that survey. And one of the questions is if your goal is to get certified, then they'll give you kind of like the, all of the lessons that you need to study for that. Um, I'm already, I already have all my certifications, so I, I can't show you that with this account. Um, certification Hub is where you go to actually take the tests. And then once you have taken the test, it'll show you your certification level, um, all that good stuff. And then the training library is where you can go to just get all of the topics organized by, or all of the lessons organized by topic. 
So that's a little bit different than the personalized path, which sort of kind of tells you how you want to do it to take the certification. It's not that great, but anyway, it's, it's there. So, so training library. So we're going to click on training library. And then you'll notice it's organized by product training and um, foundational skills here, advising clients, and then there's uh, QuickBooks desktop down there. All right, so you would go into the QuickBooks online because that's the product we are looking at. And then here are all of the topics. So um, right now they're organized by, as you can see, these different, um, the different topics. What's new this year is that they combined all of the basic training and advanced training into one group. It used to be completely separate. This year, what they did, if I just go to sales and customers, you can see that it's organized by beginner skills, intermediate skills, and advanced skills. And if I open up, for example, this intermediate skills, you'll notice that each of these lessons has a little badge on it. And if you highlight over the badge, it'll say that it's tested in the QuickBooks online exam. <clears throat> and if I go to the advanced skills and I highlight the badge, it'll say tested in the QuickBooks online advanced exam. All right, so let's say I'm gonna go in, say let's say I wanna use this training. You're not using our fast and easy, amazing training, which you should all be doing, but let's say you're not and that's fine. Um, so you're gonna go into billable expenses and there is a drop down right here that tells you what, um, that tells you to, it allows you to go back to the different things. And I noticed just now while I'm talking to you that they fixed the problem. Well, actually maybe they didn't. Hold on one second. Yeah, they did. So they <laughs> apparently somebody pointed out to them that the uh, these last ones that are about the advanced subscription are weren't in this drop down. So the only way to get to them was to actually go back. And so I was going to show you how to do that. But I see now that they fixed it, which yay for them, because so many times, <laughs> so many times Intuit does not fix things. All right. So um, that is how you would go. I, let me just show you real quick, though, since we're in here, the advanced subscription. Notice it doesn't say intermediate and advanced the way that all of the others did. So um, it still has the badges, but it's just kind of a different thing. Here's like a getting started. Notice these don't have the badges because this is not, those aren't on the test. Okay. So that's how you would navigate that. Now, the exercises that we are going to go over today, one thing that you need to know is that normally to access the sample company, you would click this gear icon and then select sample company. That is going to take you to an accountant version of the sample company. In fact, I'll just open it up so you can see it. Let me show you what I mean by that. So, um, all right, here we go. So this sample company is showing you as if you were an accountant working on Craig's books. And the way that you can tell that you are an accountant working on Craig's books, so here we are, Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, um, is you'll notice here you have this little briefcase that says Accountant Tools. I'm going to show you the other way to get to the sample company, and you'll see that it doesn't have accountant tools. So what I refer to in my training is we have the accountant side um, sample company, and then we have the client side sample company. And what we're going to be using for our exercises today is the client side sample company. And the reason is because this sample company is not advanced level certification. So let's just go to the uh, gear icon. And then you can see right here under usage. Whoops. 
Oh my goodness, darn sample company. Always pop-ups where you don't want to see them. Just refresh the screen if you get that kind of thing, guys. So if I go into the account and settings and I go to the usage tab, it'll show up eventually. Here we go. Come on, sample company, you can do it. All right. Notice it says these are your usage limits for QuickBooks Online Plus. So the accountant version of the sample company is Online Plus. And what we want is the advanced level certification. All right. So as I mentioned, right there in the, um, in the exercise is the link to, uh, to get to the client side, um, to get to the client side sample company. All right, that's QBO Advanced. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in, confirm I'm not a robot. At least as far as I know, I'm not a robot. What was that movie about the robots that didn't know they were robots? I can't remember. All right, so here we are as that loads. And you can no you'll notice that there is no, oh, I'm kind of hiding it with my thing, aren't I? Anyway, on your own, you can see that there is no accountant tools, okay? So that's how you can tell that um, you are in a client version of it. You're not in the accountant version of it, okay? So here we are. Welcome to QuickBooks Online Advanced Test Drive. So that is what we are going to be working in today for our uh, for our exercises. And there are some pretty cool things that we're going to be talking about. Okay. All right. So our first scenario, your client Craig's land or your client Craig's landscaping wants to set up a custom field for their contract renewal date. Call the custom field contract renewal date and apply this custom field to their customer list. Now this exercise actually comes from an exercise or, or a pro advisor challenge in your QBO A account, um, which I think I can no longer show you. Yeah, because I'm logged out of that, so I can't see. But if you go into that training library like we talked about, um, and you, uh, it says right here, so this is pro advisor challenge. This is, can you see where I'm pointing? Okay, good. Pro Advisor Challenge, this is um, module nine, and then uh, it's that first one, okay? So this actually comes from, this is not one of the ones that is on the test. This is just for your edification. Some of the ones we are doing today, like I said, will be on the test and some of them won't. I just wanted to show you like some of this cool stuff that's in um, advanced, okay? All right. So step one, uh, we're going to create the new field. We're going to click the gear icon and select custom fields. Custom fields used to be in account and settings. And I think if you go there now, it has a, it has a little message that says it's been moved. Um, I seem to remember uh, seeing that at one point. Maybe it's not there anymore, but. Anyway, so now because this is the first time we've created, we're creating a custom field, we are going to click um, add custom field. And I'm gonna go back to my exercise because I uh, don't wanna get ahead of myself because it's the first, look at me, look at me quoting me because <laughs> this is the first custom field, click add custom field. <sighs> All right, um, so now in the name field, we're gonna, uh, enter contract renewal date. So here is the name field. Now, if you are not seeing um, the same screen as what I am showing you, okay, so if, if your add custom field here looks different, that's because you're not in the QBO advanced level subscription. The custom fields in QBO advanced are significantly different than they are in the other subscription levels. Okay, so contract renewal date, okay. From the data type dropdown, we're gonna select date. Okay, so this just validates the, uh, the, the information that we're gonna put into this field. Okay, 
Under select category, select customer. Okay, so right here, select customer. And then for this particular um, exercise, we are not gonna worry about the sales forms. We are just going to uh, click save. Notice I have in the exercise, the options for custom fields are significantly different in the QBO advanced level subscription. If you're seeing something other than the picture above, make sure you're using the correct sample company linked in the previous step, okay? Again, that's right here in the start in the client side QBO advanced sample company, okay? All right, so then we are going to click save. And ta-da, there is our custom field, okay? Let's go to step seven. Now we want to remember in the scenario, let me hop back there for a minute. In the scenario, it says uh, we need to add this custom field to their customer list, okay? So the next step is gonna allow us to do that. So we're gonna go to sales and then customers. Going back to the exercise, that was step seven, sales and then customers. And then step eight, I'm gonna take this off of Max. I, this is the first time I've done the um, full screen and I thought it was such a great idea, but now it's bothering me because it keeps popping up the thing. So I'm just gonna make this, hopefully you can still, well, that's interesting. I can't make it bigger that direction. All right, so hopefully you guys can still, that's still big enough for you guys to see. Okay, so we are in uh, step eight. We went to the customers. Let me go back to step seven. So sales and then customers. Okay, and now we are in step eight. We're gonna click this little gear icon, not the big ear icon up here, but this little icon um, some of the, the Intuit trainers call it the baby gear, uh, but it's that small one right above the action column. And here, so that was our step. And we're going to go right here, okay? And then you'll notice that there is now this field, contract renewal date. I'm gonna check that and ta-da! it automatically put it on right here. Now, I did play around with this a lot to find out if we could move these around and um, you know have them in a different order. I couldn't figure out how to do that. So if you know how to do that, make sure that you comment and let us know. But, um, but it doesn't seem to me that you can change that is, uh, where that is. Now notice that um, none of them actually have contract renewal dates. That's because you would have to enter it in the customer record and that's not part of the exercise. So here we go, that's what we just did. Step nine, check contract renewal date, it adds it right there, okay? So that is that exercise. Let's see if the, um, let's see if the sampling company is behaving then we will be able to add a contract renewal date to a customer. It's not part of the exercise, but let's just do it and see what happens. Um, Amy's Bird Sanctuary, and then I click edit. And I should have a new field, additional info, customer type. Ah, there it is. Custom fields, contract new renewal date, Notice that there is uh, the date there, that's that validation. So let's say that she's going to uh, uh, renew October. Oh, I didn't like that. I guess let me do 12 31. Let's see what happens if she does at the end of the year. All right, like that. So let's save it. And I have to go back to the customer list. So I'm going to click there and ta-da! Now you can see what her contract renewal date is right there. Okay, so that is custom fields. Again, uh, very different experience than the, um, uh, it's a much broader experience that you have in QBO Advanced than what you do in the basic level. 
The, the one in the basic level is not currently working. Um, maybe it's because, or let me, I, let me correct myself. The one for the, in the basic level sample company is not working correctly. So um, I don't know if that's because they're just spending all their time creating the custom field for QBO Advanced. I don't know. And I, I said basic level, but I meant non-QBO advanced subscription levels. All right. Ooh, so we have a comment. For us brand new to working on certifying, is there a graphic that should show all of the tiers levels we may think about working on to achieve? Yes, Linda. That um, So if you are uh, in our fast and easy course, that you're taking our certification course, um, then there is, that's all covered in, I think it's like lesson one of module one. So it's all right there. We have a chart and that's actually part of the test where you have to answer um, which ones are, uh, you know, what's available and which subscriptions. Um, if you are, don't have our fast and easy test, then it is buried in the, um, it's that they have a, uh, file an Excel spreadsheet that you can use to compare all of the different things. And that is buried in that pro advisor training that I showed you. Now this one is, this one is on the test. And I will show you what it is that you have to know about it um, specifically for the test. All right, so, um, Notice again here with the custom performance center report right here. Um, we have to use the we have to use this same. All of the exercises today are using the same test drive advanced the client side. Um, and here is our scenario. Craig would like to compare the amount of design work he has done for his top three customers in the last twelve months: John Melton, Dylan Solfrank, and. Weisskopf Consulting, how would you set this up? Okay, so here are our steps. And I don't have a lot of pictures in this exercise. I don't know why. So I think I need to edit this exercise and um, put in some pictures for y'all. <laughs> I don't know why I don't. All right, so maybe when you're watching the replay, the exercise will look a little bit different because it has pictures. All right, so from the left nav bar, click Reports and select Performance Center. Okay, so here I am, Reports, and I'm going to select Performance Center. Okay, when prompted, enter Landscaping Services as the industry type. One of the cool things about uh, the Performance Center, or one of the cool things let me just say about QuickBooks Online is because it's online, Intuit has access to everybody's data. Now, I know people are scared of big data, but big data can provide some really fascinating insights. And one of those insights is industry benchmarks. So the reason that it's prompting us here to, to put in the, the land, that we're landscaping services is that it will actually go out, QuickBooks Online can go out and it can find other companies that are also landscaping services and it can give you reports. Obviously, it's not gonna tell you their name, but it'll show you like all of their data. How much money are they making? You know, what <laughs> if you, and it's looking in your general area, your basic location, as well as your industry. And I think there's one more data point I can't remember, but anyway, I, I think that's pretty cool. And it only happens because it's online. For all of you guys who are kicking and screaming because you hate QuickBooks Online and you would rather do desktop, this is just something that can't be done if you have desktop. All right, so Linda, hopefully you saw um, the, 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 uh, my little sarcastic note there about how easy it is to find the new client checklist. That's what it's called, the new client checklist. It's an Excel spreadsheet this year. Last year it was a Google Doc, so it was easy to just share the share the location, the web location. But anyway, all right. So now we are back. So when prompted, enter landscaping services. We are not going to be doing a a benchmark in this uh, thing, but it is 
Oh, look, this is new. Select the industry on the accounts and setting page. Oh, interesting. <laughs> All right. I just have to say, for those of you who have been working in the sample company and you keep getting like that annoying pop up in account and settings, prompting you for your um, for your industry, but there's no place to put your industry in the account and, <laughs> account and settings, and you can't even do it in that level of certification. This has been happening to me a lot as I like create these exercises. I'm in the sample company all the time, and it's very annoying. So now look what they're saying. They're saying, oh, we're gonna we're putting it on the account and settings page, and uh, we're still working on it. So that is rather annoying. But here, all we have to do is click the X. We're gonna close that. So good times. I have a love-hate relationship with Intuit. <laughs> Because, well, like my whole job, my whole life is QuickBooks Online. And, uh, but sometimes they just do things that are and crazy annoying. All right. So here we are. We're back in our exercise. It's been so long since we have read the scenario. Maybe we should do that. Craig would like to compare the amount of design work he has done for his top three customers in the last 12 months. John Melton. Dylan Solfrank and Wise Cop Consulting. How would you set this up? All right. I've been talking too much, guys. All right. So we went to the Performance Center. We're not doing the um, industry type because Intuit is crazy. Now what we're going to do is click plus add new chart, which is right here. All right. The first thing you're selecting is the metric you want to display. Craig is looking at sales. So we're going to click revenue and then click continue. Okay. So revenue. And then down here is continue. Okay. So we're going to give it a name. Top design revenue is what I suggested here. Can I copy this? No, I cannot. So I have to type it again. Top. Design revenue. Hopefully I know how to spell revenue. Okay. All right. Um, in the time period drop down, select last 12 months. Okay. What are we doing? Last 12 months. Ta-da. Look, notice how it's building the chart as we put in these things. So that's kind of cool. Um, now group by, this is, the, this is the super important piece. Okay, listen carefully, especially those of you who are studying for the test. I can't remember whether this is, oh, I can tell right here. This is on the advanced test. So if you're just taking the basic level test, don't worry about it. If you're taking the advanced level test, this is the key thing that you need to understand about performance uh, center reports, and that is this group by. Group by is what you are comparing. Now, remember in our scenario, Craig is comparing his top three customers, okay? In other situations, and read the test question carefully, you may want to group by employees, items, income, or locations, etc. okay? So what is it that you're comparing that's what you want to group by. All right, so in our case, it's going to be customers. Okay, so group by customers. And then we don't want to compare all of his customers. We only want to these top three. So we don't, in the drop down marks, select from multiple. We're just going to choose John Melton. Then we're going to do each of these. Okay, so select from multiple. We're going to do John Melton. Notice how it kind of adds it like a like a tag. Then I'm going to add the next one, Dylan, and who is a oh, wise cop? Okay, wise cop. Okay. All right now. Uh, Craig only wants to look at the design work he has done, 
done for these three customers, not all of the work, okay? So not all of the work, just the design work, okay? So you'll want to add a filter, click filter and select the items, okay? So we're gonna go to filter, okay? So remember, group by is what you're comparing and filter is only the things that you're looking at. So I'm only looking at the design income, okay? So filter by, and we're selecting items. Which items? Just the design work, okay? Where is, where is it, okay? So we select, narrow it, we're gonna narrow it down uh, to design work by clicking the drop down mark to select from multiple and then choose design, design. Why does it say design twice? Because one of them is the category and one of them is the actual product. So that's something that you learn uh, throughout the certification training. <laughs> I think it's in both the beginning, beginner and, or the basic and in the advanced. So you need to understand the difference between the product itself and the product category. All right, so what are we doing? There is design, the design category and the design, okay? And look at that, what else do we wanna see, okay? This chart is probably better viewed as vertical bars. So click the picture at the top under preview. I was just gonna say that, ooh, I don't like the trend line at all. That doesn't, that doesn't help me. I'm not a visual person anyway, but it doesn't help me at all. But if I switch it to vertical bars, which is up here, then it's far easier to see. I can just see, boom, at an instant, here's John Melton, and he's at $750, Wisecop. Um, I don't remember seeing this before. This is kind of cool, this little hover thing. Wisecop is at 375, and then Dylan is at 337. Now, if I wanted to, I could add it to my dashboard so I could see it all the time. So I could just, every time I go into the Performance Center, it would just be there as a visual. Um, but I don't think that's what we want to do. Oh, yeah, I did say add to dashboard. So let's go ahead and do that, add to dashboard. All right, and here's the one I just created, top design revenue right there is, that, is one of those tiles, okay? All right, so that is a cool thing that, are the numbers right? Yeah. So that is a cool thing that you can only do in QuickBooks uh, Online Advanced. Um, now, as accountant users, now supposedly these new features, you can use them in your QuickBooks Online Accountant account, um, even though we don't have advanced. Um, I haven't tested that, so I don't know. So again, somebody test that, somebody comment below, let, you know, let us know if you've used it for yourself. That would be cool. All right, next up, we are going to be talking about another thing that is in the Performance Center, and that is the Custom Report Builder. Like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with Intuit uh, because I am really glad that they had this Pro Advisor Challenge. This next one, by the way, is just a Pro Advisor Challenge. It's not... Um, uh, it's not on the test, but um, I'm grateful that they have the Pro Advisor Challenge so that I could learn this. I mean, this is, I only did this, by the way, for those of you watching the replay um, on YouTube, I mentioned earlier that you have to be in the locker room in order to participate live, but also in the locker room is I post a survey of like what exercises you would like to have that you would like to be able to work through hands-on and um, this week, people voted on these uh, advanced exercises, these QBO advanced exercises. And I was so glad because honestly, I learned a thing or two. <laughs> I learned a thing or two. Um, so anyway, so we're going to be doing that today. I believe it is customize a custom report template. So let me just, I never know whether to say template or template. What do you say? Template. Or template. I have the same problem with data. Is it data or is it data? All right. Okay, back. Here we go. Yes, we've got the custom report template there. 
exercise you can walk through, we can walk through it together. Okay, so again, we have to be in QBO Advanced, and, um, and there's the link. Um, this one, um, let me just show you real quick. Um, uh, if you, I, I showed you how kind of like we have this code here up the top. This is how I know, this is how we know internally where the exercises came from. But you can always go to this last tab here at the bottom and it will tell you exactly where to find this. So this is another challenge. They, these are pro advisor challenges. The one we did uh, that we just finished that I closed, I don't have up anymore, the Performance Center, that is one of ours. And so it'll tell you if you have one of our courses where it is in the course also. So that's maybe a handy thing. All right, so we're gonna go back to, I'm clicking down at the bottom, exercise. And it says, right now it says no video, but we're recording the video right now. So soon it will be there. All right, so, oh, and let me just point out too, we also have this really, we just added this this year, this send feedback form. And um, so if you find that, like we just did with the account or the industry benchmarks thing and is now an account in settings, like that kind of thing, if that's missing or that's changed, you're getting an error message or whatever, send us, fill out this form because that'll tell me that, oh, I need to update the exercise, which I, as I said, we just implemented that this year and oh my gosh, I love it. I love hearing back from you guys when, I love hearing from you all the time, but I especially love hearing when something has changed and um, it's like I have eyes on the ground. And so now I can go and update my exercises. All right, so here we are um, in our scenario. Bill wants to see his bills for a particular month grouped according to status and vendors. We'll use the custom report builder to create this for him. And it is, I have to admit, it's pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna go from the left navigation bar, we're going to select reports. Right here, and select reports. In case you hadn't noticed, they are changing up this left navigation bar. And I will do a video on it when it has settled down. Right, right now, Sometimes it's the new style, sometimes it's the old style. They just go back and forth. Sometimes it's in my own account, sometimes it's only in the sample account, sample company. Um, it, it's just all over the place. So when it settles down and we actually have our new, whatever the new left navigation bar is going to be, I will create a video talking about it because some of the features are actually kind of cool. All right, anyway. So here we are in the reports, uh, in the report center. And because we are QBO advanced, we have this button that is create new report. So let me go back to the exercise. So here's reports. Step two, create new report. Step three. Now, um, I learned so much. The thing about those pro advisor challenges, I'm so glad you guys had me do them because the, the steps that they have are not correct. They completely left out this step and I had to figure it out myself. So this is the next step, guys, is you have to create, select blank and then click create in order to follow the rest of the instructions, which, okay, so now it's, I don't have to hit blank and then this is crazy. Let me go back and do it one more time. Did I, did I do it and I didn't realize? Create new report. Oh my gosh. And it goes right to this next screen. But when I created the exercise, there was this extra step. Oh my gosh, Intuit, guys. What are we going to do about Intuit? All right. It's a love-hate relationship, I tell you. <laughs> so many new fun, cool tools, but then also so frustrating. All right. So here is step four. Start by create by using the report creation wizard, uh, which is not very good English here. Start by report creation wizard. Not very good. But anyway, that's what it is. Start by report creation wizard. Now, one of the things that's frustrating is that they have 
tons and tons of templates. Remember the title of this exercise. This came directly from your Pro Advisor Challenge. Customize a custom report template, okay? Well, there's all of these templates out there. How do I know that this template exists? I, I don't know. I, I, maybe I need to play around with it more and maybe there's a list of all the templates. I, how would I know? But here I, in step five, this is the next step in the Pro Advisor Challenge, enter bills by paid status. So if we're gonna select, that's the template we're looking for. How did we know that existed? I don't know. Bills by paid status. Bills by paid status. So even though we are actually just looking at the last 12 months, um, they don't want us to select this one, which seems like it would be logical, bills by paid status for the last 12 months. No, nope. instead, oh, Melissa says she had to hit blank. Who knows? Why did she have to hit blank and I didn't? And why did I have to do it when I did the last? <laughs> When I, when I created the exercise in the first place. I don't know. But you know what? I'm super glad to hear, Melissa, that you are following along and doing this at the same time because that is the whole point of this live stream. And I have always wondered if people come on the live stream and just listen or just watch, right? But I want you guys to actually, this is why we have hands-on practice. Okay. So uh, bills by paid status, that's what we're selecting. Okay, um, and then step six, note that while Craig only wants to see the bills for a particular month, in this exercise, we need to select a wider range due to the availability of data in the sample company. So in the dropdown on the top left, select last 12 months. This is something, again, that we couldn't do um, the exact pro advisor challenge because the exact pro, pro advisor challenge didn't give us enough data. All right, so um, so right here we're gonna say last twelve months. Da, 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 last twelve months. I'm pretty sure when I created this exercise there was zero data. Yeah. See, look look at the picture here. When I created this exercise, there was no data showing up. So that's why I had to select last 12 months. At least, I don't know. Anyway. All right. So step seven. Note that the report is already grouped by paid status, but Craig would like to see vendors as well. Okay. So let's just look at that. So here's our report. And notice right here, it, we have our paid grouping. So we have our paid and unpaid, 20 paid six unpaid, if I do my little drop down, then uh, it just shows me, I don't know what order they're in, okay? They do appear to be grouped somehow by vendor name, but I don't have like that fun little drop down and totals and all of that stuff. So that's what we're gonna be adding here, okay? So uh, to do that, we're gonna click group and then plus add, okay? So the group is right here, the reason that it has that number one is because it is grouped currently by one thing, and that is the paid status. So I'm gonna click group. See, notice paid status. So I'm gonna add another thing to group it by. So click add, and here's where I'm gonna select vendor name right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit the X right here. Now notice what happened is now we still have it grouped by paid, okay? And now within that, we have our uh, individual vendors um, grouped with the little, uh, the little drop down there. But it's still not visually the way that we would like to see it. Okay, so let's see, we did that. Step eight, we did the vendor name. Okay, steps nine, we closed the pop-up. All right. So because, let's, let me just read this. At this point, we now have a report that shows paid status as a row with vendors and subgroups underneath. But what if Craig wanted instead to have vendors as a row 
with the paid status as columns. This is what pivot tables do. It allows you to rearrange the data so that it's in the order that you want to see it, okay? This was a huge light bulb for me. I actually, um, I went to a some kind of an Intuit training when they released pivot tables. They said, ooh, now we have pivot tables in QBO Advanced. And I said, what the heck are pivot tables? I had no idea what that was. The very next day, one of our vendors, um, said, I was trying to, to create a report and uh, for a, a, an application that we use. And our that vendor said, oh, all you have to do is create a pivot table. And I had the opportunity to learn, not from Intuit, but from this other vendor, exactly <laughs> what a pivot table was. So that's what it is. It allows you to rearrange the data so that it's in the order you want to see it. And I guess if you're ex exporting to Excel, that's a thing you can al already do in Excel and people use Excel for that all the time. Um, but this is a relatively new thing in QBO to be able to do that. Okay, so that's what the pivot, pivot table uh, thing is right here. So we're gonna click pivot table, okay? And then, okay, in the rows drop down, we're gonna select vendor name because that's what we wanna see now. We wanna see vendors as rows. In the columns drop down, we're gonna select paid status so we can see. And then in the values drop down, we're gonna select amount. Now, this is kind of interesting. So, and I learned this when I was playing with it. So I don't have to actually turn this on. Um, in fact, I cannot turn it on until I have built the report. So that's kind of weird. So what did we say we want in the rows? We want the vendor. In the columns, we want the paid status. In the values, we want the amount, okay? And as soon as I did that, it built that report, right? That's kind of cool. I think that's kind of cool. Um, and then this turned on. I guess I could turn it off if I wanted. I could turn these off. I couldn't do that before until I finished the, that last thing. All right, so now let's close this and see what we have. So now we have the report that is vendor name listing. Here's what they have that's paid. Here's what they have that's unpaid. And here are the totals. So that is a cool thing that you can only do in QBO Advanced. All right, step 11, let's see, I showed you that. Step 12, um, oh, they want us to save this report. So we can change, so right now it just says my custom report. To change that, you can't change it here. You have to change it up here. You don't have to click the pencil, but you can or you can just click the name right there, and then you can give it the report, the uh, name, vendor bills by paid status. Vendor bills by paid status. Okay, and when I tab out of it, notice it changes right here. I can save it. And now it's going to be in my custom reports list. Okay, here's my custom reports. And ta-da, vendor bills by paid status. And you should be able to, one of the neat things that you can do with uh, customized reports is email them, but I don't see that they have that exported schedule report. There we go. Oh, they've changed the interface. All right, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Those of you guys who have not gone through the training, don't know about scheduling reports and sending them and all of that stuff. So I don't want to confuse you by going through. I think that is all that I promised. Um, Joel, if you could look at the email that I sent and just confirm that I covered everything. I'm pretty sure that there were only those three, uh, those three exercises plus um, I wanted to show you how to navigate the training library, which was moot because they fixed the little issue that they had. So, that, <laughs> so that's good. 
I showed you how to access the QBO Advanced Sample Company, and we talked about the difference between those. Um, uh, we talked about the difference between the the advanced. Uh, gosh, I'm getting sidetracked all of a sudden. We talked about the difference between the accounting version of the sample company and the QBO advanced version of the sample company. And I showed you how this one doesn't have accounting tools. So I think that's all I promised for today's live stream. I'm so glad that you could join us. A little bit crazy and chaotic, but, uh, but things are gonna smooth out. And next week, uh, I will see you again at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Those of you who are joining the replay, um, of course, all of the good stuff and links and exercises and all the information about our courses and all that stuff is will be down below. And those of you who are hitting out, welcome, Linda, or <laughs> who are shouting out, thank you, you're welcome, and I'm delighted to be here. You guys have a great weekend, and I will see you next time. <laughs>